Hey, welcome back everybody to another video. So today I'm going to share to you what is subliminal messaging known as lesser magic. And I learned this recently and I didn't know that I fell under this guise or this ploy from Satan and the Satanists and the people who operate in this department because I didn't know too much about it. And I wasn't studying my enemy to know the tactics of my enemy to avoid the enemy so that I can use God's knowledge and wisdom to, to fight them back. So, I didn't, I didn't have discernment. So I didn't know to discern between if the enemy was doing something behind the scenes or somebody had an ulterior motive to crush me. Or it was just for kicks and giggles. And usually the enemy likes to disguise themselves as something beautified. Or as something that, that, is, that is pleasurable or entertaining. But I'm going to pull a few examples from the scriptures first. And then I'm going to share to you my experience with lesser magic slash subliminal messaging. So here we go. So I'm going to take you guys to Genesis chapter 39 verse 10. Now, this is about the story of Joseph. And I know in my other video I referred to a story from Joseph, and I'm going to refer to it again. But this one pertains to the lesser magic slash subliminal messaging. So right here in verse 39, I'm sorry, chapter 39, verse 10 in Genesis says, and this is about Potiphar's wife trying to tempt Joseph to sleep with her because she found him attractive. And she's a married woman, I'll have you know. So, Potiphar's wife spoke to Joseph day after day, day after day, but he did not listen to her to lie with her or to be with her. So that's saying to sleep with her, have sex with her. And note how it said day after day. It's a good point. Let me go to the next scripture and we'll tie this in. So if you guys turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. Now, this is the time when Jehu reigned as king in the book of Kings, of course, and dealt wisely everything that God has given him and crushing his enemies, but being obedient to God. And one of his enemies was Jezebel. So here we go. Now, when Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and beautified her head and looked out of an upper window. Yeah, she beautified herself. Painted her eyes, beautified herself, and was hoping that she would be pleasing to Jehu. Hoping that perhaps her looking beautiful will tempt him or make or find her appeasing to where they would be at peace, right? I mean, you would think, but that's a tactic. It's a ploy from the enemy. And so let, let's go back to the Joseph story real quick. So day after day. So we need to understand that subliminal messaging doesn't happen overnight. Subliminal messaging starts years before, weeks before, months before, before it actually starts setting in into your conscious. And your conscious can receive this subliminal messaging through your subconscious. Now your subconscious is, is the thoughts in the back that linger there that are not really what you're aware of. What you're aware of is what you're conscious of. Now, this is what you're subconscious of, is that you're aware of it, but you are not aware of its tactics, aware that it's actually dementing your mind. Because your conscience will take from your subconscious what it has been stored for months or years, and eventually make it your conscience, and then that manifests, and then that becomes a part of your life. So when you're exposed to something for many days or many years, you eventually yield to it or become it. That's why in the Bible it says bad company corrupts good character. Because if you're exposed to somebody constantly doing bad things, eventually you might be tempted or swayed to do those things that they are doing you, what you would normally wouldn't do, right? And so, note how it said day after day. So day after day meaning that Joseph was bombarded by her persistence of saying, come sleep with me, Joseph, come sleep with me, Joseph, come. And the thing is, he didn't fall susceptible to her plan, to her subliminal messaging, to her lesser magic. So lesser magic is another word of saying subliminal messaging that's getting vexed in your conscience. And you don't even know that you're actually going to be acting out on this because you've been brainwashed.
brainwashed. That's where we get the term brainwashed from. You've been brainwashed for all these years to believe that this is the truth or believe that's the truth or that this is fun and or that's fun or whatever, right? So whatever is constantly being drilled on you day after day after day, that is lesser magic and simple and low messaging. And it can be used for good. That's why God says, wash your mind, wash your hands, wash your body in the word of God. That's why God says, set your mind on things above, which would be his word. So that will cleanse you from all the subliminal and lesser magic that's being done to you. So now let's go back to uh, the story of 2 Kings about Jehu. Jehu. So Jezebel looks out the upper window, right? So she's looking down and seeing, you know, who's coming because she beautified herself, made herself look beautiful. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Had you come in peace, you Zimri, who slew his master. And Jehu lifted up his voice to the widow and said, Who's on my side? Two, two eunuchs looked out at him and, and were just like, like, are we on his side? I think we might be on his side. And they, <laughs> they looked at him and he said, Throw that witch down. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He said, throw her down. And so what they did is they cast her over the wall and they killed her. They destroyed Jezebel. Now, I know you're going to say, oh, man, that's this brutal. What's God about death? It's the Old Testament. We'll get into that in another, in another video. But what I want to establish is the way that you can eliminate this. This is These are people who actually listened to God and were able to avoid the lesser magic. They were able to avoid the subliminal messaging, the temptation, because their eyes were on God and their hearts were on God. So then it was easier to stop the tactics of the enemy and be able to work in the power of the Holy Spirit to say no to the evil and yes to God despite how the situation may turn about. Like it might feel like uncomfortable or something like that. Especially when, uh, for example, uh, I'll give you a testimony of me that I dealt with subliminal messaging. So in my family, you know, I, I was surrounded by friends and, and stuff and I'm not going to mention any names. Friends and family relatives that would that would drink around me and, and smoke pot, right? And so I was exposed to that day after day for many days they would do this stuff. And I would have to sit there and just let it happen. And because I wouldn't participate, I was pretty much, you know, the guy that would just watch them do it and not really say anything about it. Just hopefully they'll get over it and whatever. Anyways, but day after day, I was tempted by this. And even at school, I was tempted by many friends to, that gave me drugs and pills and said, hey, here, take this for free. They didn't even charge me because I was close friends with them. And I would, I would tell them no. The lesser magic and the subliminal messaging didn't work on me because my eyes were fixed on my moral compass and God. And my moral compass would tell me, bing, radar, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. So I was like, no. Nah. God gave me the strength to say no because it wasn't on my own strength. Because if I went on my own strength, I probably definitely would have participated. But God gave me the strength to not hang out with these people uh, when they were going through those times like that. And if I was caught up in a predicament where I had to deal with it, God gave me the strength to not fold into temptation into giving in to the lesser magic and subliminal messaging. Now, I wanted to break this down really quick because I'm running out of time. I'm going to tell you the definition of subliminal. Subliminal is below the threshold of conscious perception, especially if still able to produce a response. So, it's not really perceived as, as understanding it right then and there, but your mind is, is breaking it down and eating and digesting it, and then your conscious will come to light to it, and then you will surely manifest it. That's why... Surround yourself by good people that fear the Lord and love God and get your head into the word of God and into prayer and you will be able to avoid all these tactics of the enemy of the subliminal message they put in movies and music and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Thanks guys for listening. <laughs>